Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and uh, today uh, you're kind of seeing a little mess in front of me here. Um, Nintendo put out a new developer asks, um, or ask the developer volume two, and it's about the Switch OLED, which by the way, I'll be picking up my retail version of the Switch OLED here uh, a little bit later, but we'll be live streaming that. But I had to make a video this morning because something in here they said didn't jive with my own discoveries, but they might be correct in a way that is really hard for me to test. So, um, according to this ask, they actually improved the Joy-Cons. Did they finally fix Joy-Con drift? Because they specifically mentioned they improved the joystick. The only reason to do that is to fix drift. So is drift fixed? What did they change? Well, I took apart my Joy-Con to find out. But before we get into what they said, I want to remind you, we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel to enter. By the way, you got to be subscribed to win any of our giveaways. And, uh, yeah, by, at the end of the month, we'll have some sort of event or some sort of announcement or something like that of the winners of those games. All right, let's dive into what Nintendo said here. In, the, in this uh, Ask the Developer, there's a section on the, the... There's four parts to it, and then the final part, uh, there's a part that says another major characteristic of the Nintendo Switch is the Joy-Con controllers. A big part of the user experience comes from Joy-Con, but were there any improvements? Yamashita says, Joy-Con controllers have lots of different features, so we've been continuing to make improvements that may not always be visible. Among others, the analog stick parts have continuously been improved since launch, and we are still working on improvements. The analog stick at first release cleared the Nintendo reliability test using the method of rotating the stick while continually applying a load to it with the same criteria as the Wii U gamepad's analog stick. As we have always been trying to improve it as well, we have investigated the Joy-Con controllers used by the customers and repeatedly improved the wear resistance and durability. The parts of the Joy-Con analog sticks are not something that can be bought off the shelf, but are specifically designed, so we have undergone a lot of considerations to improve them. In addition, we improved the reliability test itself and we have continued to make changes to improve durability and clear this new test. When the effects of our improvements were confirmed, we promptly incorporated them into the Joy-Con controllers that are included with the console. Nintendo Switch Lite and the ones sold individually that were manufactured at that time. This involves the internal components of the Joy-Con, so you can't tell the improvements from the outside, but we have used new versions of the parts when we repair them, and also similar continual improvements have been made for the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller as well. Um, and then, uh, and then they, they, they actually press them on this. Credit to Nintendo. They're not specifically mentioning drift, but they do dive deeper here. It says, do you mean that basically wear is unavoidable as long as parts are physically in contact? Shiota says, yes, for example, car tires wear out as the car moves, as they are in constant friction with the ground to rotate. So with the same premise, we ask ourselves, how can we improve durability? And not only that, but how can both compatibility and durability coexist? Is there something we are continuously tackling? Yamachita know, says, the degree of wear depends on factors like the combination of materials and forms. So we continue to make improvements by researching which combination are less likely to wear. We mentioned that the Joy-Con controller specifically hadn't changed in the sense that we hadn't added new features such as new buttons. But the analog sticks in the Joy-Con controllers included with the Nintendo Switch OLED model are the latest version with all the improvements. Needless to say, so are the analog sticks included in the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Lite sold separately, Joy-Con controllers, and Nintendo Switch Pro controllers that are currently being shipped. So they're saying, hey, look, everything today, whether you buy an OLED or you buy a new Switch or new Lite, will have the improvements. So I question. Did they actually do anything? Because remember, we a long time ago it was pointed out that there seemed to be a weird design uh, principle behind these sticks, uh, and so what what could you know be done about it? Well, I took apart this Joy-Con. This is a Switch OLED Joy-Con, the latest according to Nintendo that they have done with the revision, and I took apart the stick itself. And here's a couple pictures. Now, when you compare these to the original Switch Joy-Con, the design has not changed. So, one thing people hoped to fix drift is that Nintendo would fundamentally change the design of the joystick and well, they didn't. So this is why my original conclusion when people asked me was were there any changes to the joystick? And my answer was no, because hello, look, it looks identical 
there's different part numbers, but it looks identical to prior sticks. But Nintendo's claim isn't so much that they redesigned how the stick works. Their claim is that they made it more durable. Now, doing a durability test is a little bit difficult on my end um, because you're basically, the presumption here is that the reason drift occurs is because of wear and tear on that metal padding or dust and or wear and tear on some of the other contact points. Now, this has obviously something, you know, the dust part you can't really do necessarily much about, just hope the enclosure's nice and tight and it's really hard to get dust into. Uh, but the wear and tear on that metal part um, that seems to be, you know, some people fix by sticking cardboard in because it pops the part back up. The thing is, um, I don't really know how to test the durability of this. This is where my lack of knowledge comes because I could obviously take my screwdriver here or take a little pick or, you know, like this, and I could easily go ahead and scratch that metal. And I guarantee I'll be able to scratch that metal just as easily as the prior metal on old Joy-Con. So, like, I'm not so sure that doing that is going to necessarily um, prove anything because if they have improved the durability of that metal, it's not going to be something that if you pick at it with another piece of metal, you're going to be able to actually tell a direct difference. Now, you could try to use hardness tests, of course, but hardness tests aren't necessarily made for this specific use case on such a thin PCB. So, I also don't want to go ahead and ruin the joystick because I don't know how readily available the latest and greatest joysticks are out there. So in conclusion, obviously I took it apart. I compared, they look the same. It's possible Nintendo is 100% telling the truth here. The only way to really prove at this point that they, these joysticks are more durable is to wait. Wait and see if drift is a problem. Notably, Nintendo's most recent update, the 13.0.0 update, did seem to fix drift for some prior Joy-Cons that were drifting or at least temporarily fix it. I'm assuming there were some software calibration corrections taking drift into account, which yes, you can counter drift with software calibration to a certain degree. I assume that's not going to work forever. Those are usually just Band-Aid fixes. Uh, but when it comes to these, I don't have any currently drifting Joy-Con. Um, I've repaired all mine and sold them. So my conclusion here is that the design of the sticks has not changed at all. But that doesn't mean the durability hasn't improved, at least according to Nintendo. We're just going to have to wait and see. They said Switch OLED and any new sold Switch today comes with the latest and greatest tech. But they specifically mentioned Switch OLED for sure, latest and greatest Joy-Con tech. We'll have to wait and see um, over time if these end up drifting as bad as prior Joy-Con. Obviously, they did not specifically talk about drift or mention Joy-Con drift. Uh, by name because they have a number of lawsuits going on, but they did claim they made them more durable. Time will tell. All right, folks, I'm Nintendo Rebel Chance from Nintendo Prime. I'm so glad you're here. Be sure to tune into my live stream happening a little bit after this video goes out because, uh, hey, we got a lot to talk about. Um, I'm picking up my Switch OLED and a copy of Metroid Dread live uh, for you guys from my local GameStop. We'll be at GameStop an hour before opening. Um, get a lot of fun chat going. It'll be right off my phone. We're going to have a great time. You guys are amazing. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to Nintendo Prime. And I will catch you guys in the next video.